Hey guys, it's the night after finishing the pre-release on Saturday. I hope you all did well and followed my warning. I see a few people at the pre-release did do what I said to try to avoid. Yeah, I was right. Let's just say that. Because <laughs> um, essentially you're fighting an opponent when you have 20 life or 10. And they got 30. Good luck with that one. Um, did see quite a few really great infect decks though. One kid pulled incredible cards. And he made the best infect deck I've seen ever. Like, he got really lucky with his packs. Get the Ricks, all the infect creatures. Uh, he was black red, so it was really good. I myself didn't grade so much of so great of a pull. Ended up going green red. Um, sorry, it's just uh, I was yelling quite a bit today, so my voice is gone. Um, if not for a Horde Smelter Dragon, I would think I would have not got my uh, my wins. I wouldn't have really won as I did, and he came up with almost all my gains. Even if it was the last card I drew before I died. Thank God for a 40 card decks unlimited. Um, so, let me know how you guys did. I went 3-2-1. Uh, I actually killed a person. I killed two people. Due to, in fact, my last game that I had to win to go 2-0 and oh in my last. Uh, I actually killed him with infect. And bellowing... Uh, Tangle Worm, oh, 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 that's a limited bomb right there. Especially since I threw Intelligent Lad, uh, Fallen. But wait, you told us not to put infective normal creatures. Yeah, that's right, but he's a great protector. Because with protection from artifacts, I can block all their guys not to worry and give them minus one, minus one counters. He usually either stole my opponents or he died. He ate up removal. But the one game he didn't on my last game, got Intimidate, and I just killed him for poison. I had three life left, he had a 3-3 three, three flyer. I had him, he arrested my Bellow Tangle Worm. He had nine uh, poison counters on him, came down to that, I finally won. But <sighs> the funnest card in all limited, I have to say, is Liquid Metal Coating. So much that you can do with this, especially... Rust tick. This is a must. If you see this, that you open this unlimited with scars, immediately you should grab this in uh, sealed. And in draft, it should not be one of the last cards. It really locks down your opponents. Horde Smelter Dragon should be grabbed immediately at all times. It's not that great of a rare, yeah. But in limited, this is the mo one of the most powerful things there is. You destroy your guy's artifacts, which with little liquid metal coating, yeah, see that? See, yeah, yeah. Um, and he gets huge. Only one game he didn't win me a victory, and that was because my opponent devoted two or three cards to just kill him. Um, well, I guess I'll show you what I made for the deck right now. I didn't really get a good pull at all. I got very disappointed. No mythics. While ev both people sitting next to me opened two mythics in the whole thing. As you see, I started off with the goblin. Two uh, copperhorn scouts. Up here. Two copperhorn scouts. A vector asp. Just for a 1-1. One, one. For one, that'll get me metalcraft. Then two galvanic blasts. Even if it's a shock. It's a needed. Got liquid metal coating because it works with so many things. Golem's heart, of course, is a must in this kind of uh, set. Light Mamba is the best kind of infect defender that I told you guys about. Best kind of regenerate makes them. It'll really stop your opponent in its tracks. Sovak replica is a great replica for limited. Destroy their enchantment or artifact. They saved my ass quite a bit. Palladium Myrrh is just good ramp. 
Full Shock Replica. It's just great beats. Genesis Wave. My deck kind of worked with this somehow. Uh, it was very iffy. But it worked for me every now and then. But it doesn't win you games, I can tell you that. But I can't wait to play that and construct it. That's going to be sick. Slice and Twain is perfect in this environment. Especially the liquid metal coating. We'll go back to that. Bam. Kill even their creature. Two for one. Uh, Tell Jalad Fallen. Blade Tribe Berserkers. Uh, ended up mostly being... Since as you see I'm not that heavy on the artifacts. Uh, quite often ended up being just a 3-3 three, three for 4. And you know what? I didn't have anything. So, it was good. This guy, I only got to play him in my last two games, but he was always a beast every time he came out. Turn to Slag. A, gr a great 2 for 1. It won me so many games. And the Horde Smelter Dragon. As you can see, here is my sideboard, but I didn't really have to use it much. So, yeah. I didn't really sideboard much, there was no point. Uh, I saw my deck was fine the way it was. Nothing in my sideboard was really going to help me. Like I said, I really didn't have any cards that worked that great together. But this got me 3, 2, and 1. Um, now, I have a video that I made after the pre-release. And if you guys really want me to, it's me and my two friends in the car raving about the pre-release and what just happened and all that, but it seems the quality of it went out the window. No, literally, it went out the window. It seems having an open window in a car while you're videotaping will entirely ruin the audio. It's very crackly, but you can still kind of hear me, especially when I'm screaming about stuff. And joyously. <laughs> and I ended up getting two prize packs, which I got another... Spike Shot Elder. I got a Tunnel Agnes from Kid, so that's this card is pretty sick and constructed. If Red Deck wins, survives. Any, you know what? Any Red Deck can throw this in there. Goodbye, Valakut. Goodbye, uh, Titan Ramp and all that. But that's not what I got on my second pack. As I said before, I didn't get any Mythics in my normal packs. So, oh, pre-release promo. Okay. And had my friend, um, right before I opened up my boost pack, I'm like, yo, Corey. Blowing this. You know, for good luck. <laughs> Had a little kid. Yo, blowing this? He goes, what? I didn't even know the kid that well. He was just there and I versed him one of my matches and I beat him. We're like, blowing it. He goes, okay. Open it up. I'm like, uh, yeah, there's an E. It's five mana. It's mythic. Oh, you cannot see that. Oh, no, now you can. Yeah, 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 there you go. There you go. Elspeth, frick yeah. So... I would like you guys to like, comment, love, talk to me. Let me know, first of all, if you think Elspeth is going to go up or down in price. If I should sell it or not. No, I'm not trading it. And also, it seemed I had, as you, if you saw before, there was a, a forest in my sideboard just in case. My mana was a bit off. A lot of times I ended up getting mana flooded, and I was at 17 land, which is the recommended amount. Like, Rise of Eldrazi, maybe you put, like, 18 or 19. And Zendikar, you know, you put a little bit more as well to do the landfall. This one, and M11, and M10, you know, you put you put less. You don't need that many, obviously. They're normal sets. But it seemed that kept getting mana flooded. So let me know how many lands you normally put. Um, I had 17 in mine. And it somehow screwed me. So many times. So many games. I just... Six lands in a row. So, respond to me. Let me know. And also, let me know if you want to see the video of me and my friends going nuts in the car. Until next time. See you guys. And uh, if you go into release to do that whole ordeal again. Very sweaty at the store I was in. Very hot and sweaty. Very disgusting. Let me know how you do. Alright. Till next time.